Well, here in the Belgian Pavilion in Venice, we've uh, made a fictional model landscape. We've selected 50 beautiful pieces of architecture, all from uh, Flanders and Brussels. Um, and with those 50 pieces, we've, we've made this layout, a bit of a puzzle, um, um, which in a way makes you feel like, you know, you enter through a bit of a suburban situation, you come onto a town square, and then there's more, a little bit more freight, more loose, pieces of, uh, of, of architecture more towards the back. So themes which are related to that often, you know, are, are, are a little bit morphological or typological. You know, the, we have the, the, the very small uh, corner plots, the very shallow plots. We have extremely deep plots. We have uh, public buildings uh, pulled back from the building line, pu public buildings in between, uh, inside the building block. Um, uh, we have the, 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 the scale jumps which buildings make because the city densifies and grows. So we've actually selected all these projects because they, uh, they relate to this, to this, to this topic of, an, of a weak urban tradition and actually architecture that thrives on that condition and, and gets a lot of energy and joy out of, of, of these quirky situations. So we, we've, we've used the word capriccio for that. Canaletto, you know, used to make paintings of Venice, but they were also fictional. He also took buildings from different cities and composed new cityscapes uh, um, from that. So, so in a way, this, this model landscape is also a three-dimensional capriccio, um, which, which uses these, you know, pieces and these moments in Flanders and Brussels where you think like this, this friction, this, this mix is interesting, is, is actually something unique which we could uh, work on. So rather than thinking of the ugliest, ugliest city in, in uh, ugliest country in the world, which sometimes people refer to talking about Belgium, we try to make it uh, somehow the most beautiful country in the world. In the book, we've we've basically um, um, the main the main uh, part of the book is 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 all these fifty projects uh, documented um, as as models, but also with the photographs of the projects. But um, there, there are important uh, contribu contributions uh, 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 as text. One very important part of the book is actually the contributions of many people involved, let's say, in the middle field of architecture uh, in, um, in, in Flanders. We've asked many people uh, of that middle field, many of our city architects and uh, people involved in quality chambers, the government architect, to, to write a short piece about working in that middle field. Because many of the projects also here um, came, I mean, came from opportunities created by uh, the middle field. So in a, in a way, looking at this capriccio, you understand that this, this beautiful country um, uh, really relies on, on, on that middle field. We had a little bit more time uh, uh, due to the situation. We had an extra year and we wanted to use uh, uh, that time in a, in a useful way. And um, so we invited uh, um, 45 non-Belgian architects to contribute also to this story because our, our show here is very rooted in this, uh, in this Belgian condition. Um, but we also want an international perspective on the idea of the capriccio. So again, there, uh, uh, 45 designers actually answered the question like, what city do you make architecture for? That was the question we asked them. And um, they came up with very different uh, answers to that question. Very surprising uh, and, 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 and rich wall full of uh, exciting postcards. And also there we, we asked the very established uh, architects, but also young, uh, and emerging designers to, 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 to provide that answer. Just like in this model landscape, we also felt, you know, we had to bring known names, but we also had to come up with new names. In a way, you know, you walk into the pavilion and you, you wonder how we live together and then maybe the answer is like this. <laughs> um, so that's the one easy uh, answer. But I think, uh, you know, if you would ask a climate scientist, um, what architects can do to, to work on this, on this crisis win. They, they will not say build new cities, come with new technology. They will say retrofit 
intensify, make your cities more livable and robust, robust and attractive and resilient. So it actually the answer of climate science is very down to earth. It's actually the city of the future is just in front of us and we have to improve it and, 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 and make it more efficient. Uh, so we, we, we're, 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 we're not onto a technological track. We're really like saying, uh, just, just look in front of you.